The call came through the office landline, through a system that was at least 20 years old and had fought off all technological advances. It was taken by a tattooed receptionist named Felicity, a new girl who would be gone before she fully understood the phones. They were all leaving, it seemed, especially the clerical help. Turnover was ridiculous. Morale was low. The Board on Judicial Conduct had just seen its budget chopped for the fourth straight year by a legislature that hardly knew it existed. Felicity managed to route the call down the hall to the cluttered desk of Lacey Stoltz. There's a call on line three, she announced. Who is it? Lacey asked. She wouldn't say. There were so many ways to respond. At that moment, though, Lacey was bored, and she did not wish to waste the emotional energy necessary to properly chastise the kid and set her straight. Routines and protocols were crumbling. Office discipline was waning as BJC spiraled into a leaderless mess. As a veteran, the veteran, it was important to set an example. Thanks she said, and punched the blinking light. Lacey Stoltz. Good afternoon, Miss Stoltz. Do you have a moment? Female, educated, no hint of an accent, mid-forties, give or take three years. Lacey always played the voice game. And to whom do I have the pleasure? My name is Margie for now, but I use other ones. Lacey was amused and almost chuckled. Well, at least you're upfront about it. It normally takes me some time to work through the aliases. Anonymous callers were routine. People with gripes about judges were always cautious and hesitant to come forward and take on the system. Almost all feared retaliation from the powers on high. Margie said, I'd like to talk to you somewhere private. My office is private if you'd like. Oh, no, she snapped, apparently frightened at the thought. That won't work. You know the Siler building next door? Of course, Lacey said as she stood and looked out her window at the Siler building, one of several nondescript government addresses in downtown Tallahassee. Margie said, there's a coffee bar on the ground floor. Can we meet there? I suppose. When? Now. I'm on my second latte. Slow down, give me a few minutes, and you'll recognize me? Yes, you're on the website. I'm in the rear, left side. Lacey's office was indeed private. The one to her left was empty, vacated by an ex-colleague who'd moved on to a bigger agency. Across the hall, an office had been converted into a makeshift storage closet. She walked toward Felicity and ducked into the office of Darren Trope, a two-year man already prowling for another job. You busy? She asked as she interrupted whatever he was doing. Not really. It didn't matter what he was or was not doing. If Lacey needed anything, Darren belonged to her. Need a favor. I'm stepping over to Siler to meet a stranger who just admitted that she is using a fake name. Oh, I love the cloak and dagger. Sure beats sitting here reading about some judge who made lewd comments to a witness. How lewd? Pretty graphic. Any photos? Videos? Not yet. Let me know if you get them. So, mind stepping over in 15 minutes and taking a picture? Sure, no problem. No idea who she is? None whatsoever. Lacey left the building took her time walking around the block, enjoyed a moment of cool air, and strolled into the lobby of the Siler building. It was almost 4 p.m., and there were no other customers drinking coffee at that hour. Margie was at a small table in the rear to the left. She waved quickly, as though someone might notice, and she didn't want to get caught. Lacey smiled and walked toward her. African-American, mid-40s, professional, attractive, educated, slacks and heels, and 
dressed nicer than Lacey. Though around BJC these days, any and all attire was allowed. The old boss wanted coats and ties and hated jeans, but he had retired two years ago and took most of the rules with him. Lacey passed the counter where the barista was loafing with both elbows stuck on the formica, hands cradling her pink phone that had her thoroughly fascinated. She did not look up, never thought about greeting a customer, and Lacey decided to pass on more caffeine anyway.